Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, Alabama football on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Alabama survives a homecoming victory over Arkansas 24 to 21. It was not a complete game, not by any stretch of the imagination. Coach Saban was highly critical of himself during the post-game press conference. This team has not put together four quarters of football. It's so frustrating to watch this team because while they are trending upwards and they won their sixth game of the season, this win, it doesn't feel like a quality win. Coach Saban said after the game, there's a difference between winning and beating your opponent. Following the game, Sam Pittman, who's a tremendous football coach, by the way, said that, I feel like we had an opportunity to win this game. 100% they did. Arkansas was right in that game. Alabama led that game 21 to six. The first quarter, it was Arkansas that jumped out to a 6-0 lead after a 55 and a 49 yard field goal. By the way, that kicker is fantastic. Alabama answers back late in the first quarter when Milrow hits Kobe Prentice for a 79 yard touchdown. It was a beautiful throw. Right on the money, Kobe Prentice is able to outrun the defenders. Alabama gets back the momentum. Then on a one yard sneak, Jalen Milrow gets inside. So Alabama goes up 14-0. And then Alabama's offense comes right back and it's Milrow to Amari Nyblack for another touchdown that put Alabama up 21 to six. You're starting to feel good. You're starting to feel excited. And during that first half, Jalen Milrow is seven of 10 passing for over 200 yards. Arkansas made some adjustments at halftime, but Alabama didn't come out to play in that second half. Coach Saban said whatever he told the team didn't transpire on the field because Arkansas outscored Alabama 15 to three in the second half. If it wasn't for probably the play of the game, Dallas Turner, who had that quarterback sack on KJ Jefferson, who knows what could have happened towards the end of that game. Jalen Milrow is not a finished product by any means just yet. Seven games. He's trending upwards. And that deep ball is right where we need it to be. The intermediate passing continues to improve, but it's not perfect. The pass that he threw up to Amari Nyblock, that was a good touch pass. But there were some times that he was just inaccurate. And he said after the game, those are on him and he has to improve. I think this was the first time through seven games that I've seen some drops that were on the wide receivers. I think there's been a couple here and there throughout this first part of the season, but I know Malik Benson had a drop and there was a couple others. Overall, this team needs to play four quarters of football because if they don't, somebody's going to beat them sooner than later. It's going to be Tennessee. It's going to be LSU. It could be each of those teams. Each of those teams beat Alabama last year. It could be Auburn on the back end. It's concerning that they haven't put together four quarters of football, but at the same time, if you're an optimistic person, you're like, well, maybe they're going to put it together at some point. The defense is the defense. And once again, this season, it was a freshman by the name of Caleb Downs who led the team in tackles. He had seven tackles today, was called on a penalty. Jalen Key had seven. And how about the booming hits by the Alabama defense? Jalen Key had a big hit today. Big hit. And you know who played really well? Is Q Robinson. He had six tackles, including a tackle in special teams where he laid the wood early in the first quarter. I thought he played great. Deontay Lawson had six tackles. Tresman Marshall also had a very good uh, game. And by the way, Coach Saban said that him along with CJ Dupree, um, their injuries are not significant and those guys should be back uh, for next week's game against Tennessee. Chris Broswell had five tackles. Taron Arnold had five uh, tackles as well. And in terms of quarterback sacks, Alabama was able to get to the quarterback four times today. And tackles for loss, they had seven. And look, KJ Jefferson is a great quarterback, 100%. And we knew that going in. Coach Saban had the soundbite of the weekend, of course, saying that at one point, KJ Jefferson swatted a player off him like a cow slapping a gnat off his ass. It was a big man. This is a big time college football. You're going up against two quality quarterbacks in your next two games. You got to be 
in the right mindset to be able to play at that level because Tennessee and LSU are going to be very challenging games. I really, really liked Alabama's run game today. I saw a variety of running backs, and I thought they all ran hard. Jace McQuellen, he had 83 yards. He ran hard, 5.2 average. Roy Dale Williams had a really big run, a longest of 35 yards, 9.7 per average. Jan Miller thought he ran hard, 10 yards per average, and he had a longest of 19. Justice Haynes, continuing to see a little bit more of the freshman, he had two carries for 11 yards. And I'll tell you what, if he doesn't get tackled, he might take that to the house. The running backs, you can stick your hand into a jar and pull out any of those running backs, and they are quality individuals, quality running backs that run with a real purpose. I think Alabama's running game did a great job today. Overall, their net total was 177 yards off 42 carries. If you include Jalen Milrow, who had... 11 carries for a negative 19 yards. A lot of those clearly are quarterback sacks as he was sacked five times once again. And the thing about Jalen Miro is those sacks are on him because I really want to credit Alabama's offensive line. I don't know if you guys noticed, and maybe you guys will notice on your rewatch, but the offensive line did a really great job today giving him pass protection. Sometimes he doesn't throw the balls out of bounds rather than just take those quarterback sacks. But the good thing is, is he is not forcing bad passes. It was just inaccuracies, which led to his performance today. 10 of 21, 238 yards, two touchdowns with the longest of 79 yards. Up next, Alabama takes on Tennessee, and then you have an open week to prepare for LSU. I think each of those games are going to be very challenging for Alabama. And I think that the defense is going to, once again, have to put it together to help this offense out. And, and I'll say it again. If this offense is ever able to catch up with the defense, this team can do what they want to do, and that's get to the SEC title. There's some very difficult games ahead of Alabama football. This team is not complete, and I know we keep saying that, but they're not. They haven't put together four quarters. And it was good to see James Burnup back out there. You know, he went out with the injury. He punted the ball seven times today for 349 yards. His longest was 59 yards. And we got to give it up to Will Reichert once again. Will Reichert is now the all-time leading scorer in SEC history. Guy has over 480 points. Will Reichert is money in the bank. The guy is playing at such a high level. Even Coach Saban once again praised him. And he said that he's glad that he came back because he increased his draft stock in the NFL regarding kickoffs. Will Riker had five kickoffs today for 323 yards. And um, just overall, he was uh, fantastic. He was good from 30 yards out today. It feels like a frustrating win when you watch this team. But they are 6-1. and one. They're 4-0 and zero in SEC play. They beat a good team. Arkansas was a lot better than people thought. They played Ole Miss close. They played LSU close. They have a great coach. Alabama turns the page to Tennessee. You got to put it together for Tennessee. You got to put it together for LSU. Um, and we'll see where these uh, guys can go. But uh, coming to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Kyle Henderson of Bama Football on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We appreciate you being here.